OK, this seems to be working. Hello? Uh, as I've already been introduced, and the presentation is going to be about a very beautiful operating system called NixOS or NixOS. I don't know which pronunciation is correct, to be honest, so I'll be abusing both. Uh, first of all, this uh, talk is going to be slightly different uh, in terms of a uh, few technological tests. If you open this link, you should be able to follow the slides on your device live. And there's also, if you look to the top left corner, there's a hamburger menu which you can open and you should be able to post questions. So if you have any questions, try to post them through, through, uh, through this live, uh, live show. And uh, I will do an extended QA, actually, because I think, uh, or I hope there will be more questions than I can answer in the talk alone. So feel free to put in there. And if, if you can put a test question, maybe I'll, I'll see them right here and see if it works. Anyway, don't panic. Nixos really doesn't bite. This is a sort of a sales pitch for the OS, so I'm not going to go into many details. But I'm not a very good salesperson, so uh, I'm going to give you the spoilers right in front. Uh, Nixos really doesn't bite. That's a lie, of course. It doesn't bite more than the others. If you do try new distros, you always get bitten by something. Nixos is no different in this, but uh, that's the point of this presentation. It can be a bit frustrating because it's a diff bit of different distribution than the others, but uh, once you start using it, you'll learn to love it. I already see people <laughs> with t-shirts already here, so there's living proof it up. It'll grow on you really, uh, very easily. So you might be saying, asking yourself, why should I listen to this guy? Well, my name is Jakub. I've got all the socials, everything. But more importantly, I've been using Linux for uh, over 20 years now, 19 of which uh, I've been using Linux uh, full time. I've been paid for using Linux for well over a decade, and most importantly, I've been using NixOS as my only desktop operating system for over four years, so I hope I've got a little something to say on the topic. So what, the <coughs> what is NixOS, and why should you care? Well, uh, if you want to talk about NixOS, we first have to take a little detour and talk about Nix, the package manager. Uh, Nix, the package manager, is a very specific package manager. You already know what package manager is if you're using Linux these days. Nix does the same role, but it does it quite differently. It is functional, declarative, it's quite fancy, and it provides immutable results, which is probably the, the most interesting part of, 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 uh, this <coughs> of this piece of software. We'll talk about all of these uh, points very soon in detail. One of the more interesting things about Nix as a package manager is that it actually runs on everything. It's not bound to Nix OS, so you can try Nix on, yes, even on phones. <laughs> so, Nix OS, uh, what's, what's makes it, what makes it unique? Well, Nix. Nix gives Nix OS many features, like immutable package management and dependencies, fully declarative system configuration. It's, uh, if, you, if you are, uh, experience with, say, things like Terraform or Puppet, you might know what this means. If you're, not, if you're not, follow my lead, and you'll know what it means very soon. The system state is atomic. It's, uh, it means that, uh, well, it's atomic. You know what it means, right? If you have a database, atomicity is uh, the inherent feature of uh, Nix OS configuration. Uh, it protects you. You really can't break Nix OS easily, because if you do, if you do uh, a typo or something, the system just won't build and nothing will happen. Hence the atomicity here. And all the configuration for the operating system is in one place and it's written in a single language that's, well, rather easy to understand. Nixos is also a quite user-centric distribution because uh, it allows you, as a user, to create dynamic environments for your applications, environments plural. You can have multiple environments in parallel running for different workloads, different experiments, anything you want. Uh, it allows you to build different and completely independent user profiles and independent uh, what it means. Uh, again, we'll talk about it very soon. Uh, user configuration can be done in a very similar way than the system configuration is done. That is being declarative and, uh, well, 
atomic and everything. And of course the community, the QNixOS community is one of the greatest community out there. People in NixOS are aware that the distro is different and they are very, very helpful to newcomers because they understand the frustration the newcomers come with sometimes. <coughs> Don't be frustrated, really. It's not worth it. It's easy. So, let me give you a bunch of good reasons to switch to NixOS. It's a personal opinion, no warranty or anything better, and bunch is just a subjective term. So, would you care to guess what this is? No guesses. Yeah, it is. It is. It is an XOS configuration, but this specific configuration is actually complete and working system configuration. This is all you need, like literally all you need to have your desktop running uh, full XOS with Plasma 5, with Firefox, and your favorite editor. Like literally all. There's nothing, you, you don't need to add anything to have a working system. So this is how easy it is. Uh, well, you probably see this. Okay, I'm lying just a little bit. Uh, this is a way to split your Nixos configuration if you want. But this specific case, this specifically is uh, this. Uh, this is a configuration for uh, file systems and such. Uh, this is generated for you by the installer, so you don't have to care about this. It just has to be there because there some, has to be some kind of initial state, but this you don't have to care about. This is not a complete example. I've got, I've got a much larger configuration in there, but uh, you get the idea, right? So about the NixOS <coughs> configuration. Well, as I said, it's declarative. As you have seen, Declarative configuration means that uh, you basically say what you want, but you don't have to say how it's done because that's what Nix does for you. You just say, okay, I want Firefox, that's it. I want Plasma, I want X server, I want, uh, I want an Nginx container. You just say that you want something and it'll magically happen. It is immutable. It means that once the configuration is made, it doesn't change. And if you make uh, the configuration with the same inputs, you will always get the same outputs regardless of the current state. So the current state doesn't really matter when you create a new configuration. That means it's reproducible. You can always make the same configuration all over again, you can test it, and you can be sure that if you do the configuration same and you give it the same inputs, you will always have the same outputs. And it's also atomic. It means that uh, once the configuration is, let's say, created or built in Nixos terms, then you can switch to it, and the switch is atomic. You know atomicity from databases probably? It means that the switch either happens at all, uh, either happens completely, or doesn't happen at all. So it's virtually impossible to end up in a half-configured system because of this uh, atomicity principle. It's not possible to break things just by you know, rebooting system or something during, during the build or anything, because that's, that's, that's the inherent property of the system. So how do you deploy this kind of config? Well, it's a simple command. This command will take all your configuration and uh, it will <coughs> sorry. And it will build you a new operating system configuration and it will switch your runtime to it. Just like this. You might be asking yourself right now, well, I want new packages. I always do some Pacman or apt apt or yum or whatever or DNF, I heard is the new thing in Red Hat World. So how do you do that with packages? I mean, do I have to do this all the time if I want to just add new packages into the system? Well, you can, but you don't have to because we've got these profiles I've been talking about a while ago. This command what will, will install the package Krita for you in your user profile, and once it's done, you can just start it. But let's say we don't like Krita. Let's say, okay, uh, yeah, I don't like this editor. What do I do now? Well, you can uninstall the package, of course, but then you say, okay, but let's try a different thing. Let's, let's say I want to try Inkscape. Do I have to do the install and uninstall again? Well, again, you can, but you don't have to. Nix has this great feature of uh, running, actually, a package or package output that you don't even have to install. This thing, if you run this in your Nix environment, it will start the Inkscape package for you but it will not install it into your environment. This will create some kind of, let's say, one-off ephemeral dynamic environment just for Inkscape, which will disappear after Inkscape ends. Which is great for testing new stuff, which is great for if you don't want to 
take care of any configuration or anything if you have your configuration completely decorated, which you can, of course, even the packages. Or if you want to try things, you can do it like this, and you don't mess up your profile if you don't want to. So, testing packages is great, but can I test the configuration of the system as well? Well, of course you can. Because the Nixos rebuild command doesn't only do switches, it does a bunch of other things. Uh, let's talk about uh, the dry activate thing, that's one of the more interesting things. Uh, the dry activate does something like Nixos rebuild switch, except it won't do the actual switch. It will do all the builds, it will show you what will have to be done in order to switch to the new configuration, but it won't do the switch itself. Uh, that's good for testing uh, things, if you, if you have some kind of uh, inconsistent configuration that requires runtime uh, run operation, like uh, what happens basically, this is, this is uh, the, the thing that happens at switch is something like what happens in post hooks uh, on package installs, like unit reloads, uh, runtime configuration, these kind of things. So NixOS will tell you that this will happen if you want to do the switch, but it won't do the switch. Another interesting thing is the NixOS rebuild boot. Uh, this will build the configuration. It will prepare your bootloader, so if you reboot your box, it will boot into this new configuration, but it won't touch your current config. This is useful if you have, let's say, a kernel upgrade and you're not sure that your current packages will work with the newer kernel for, for whatever reason. So, there's one more interesting thing, and that is build VM. You can actually build your whole configuration into a totally separate virtual machine which you can play with. I don't know that if any other system does this. So now you've tested everything, and you want to try to break it, right? Well, this happens with common distros. You edit something here, you add a package there, and everything breaks, right? You've been there all. Well, not with Nixos. Good luck breaking that. Because, again, in order to break things, you would first have to switch to the configuration, but you won't switch on syntax error because the build will fail. You won't switch if you have compatible settings because the build will fail. It won't even build if there are upstream bugs Nix OS knows of. That happens a lot of, a lot of time to me when I try to build a newer kernel with ZFS because I use, I use ZFS and ZFS doesn't always keep adding newer kernels. So if, if there is a new kernel coming in which is not yet compatible with ZFS, I got a message, hey, your package ZFS is broken, you can't do this, and I won't break my system. On Arch Linux, for instance, when that happened and I missed the little message in Pac-Man that something didn't happen correctly, but it still built the kernel, I rebooted it, and the system didn't boot before because there was no drivers for ZFS. This does not happen on Xos. But what happens if you do manage to break the thing? I mean, it's pretty hard, but it is also possible. So let's say we broke the system. Do you know what this is? Okay, f for those of you who don't, I'm sure you know what this is, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It makes us as its own time machine. You really can do all these things because XOS has all these properties. Again, these naturally lead to the time machine capabilities, but since NixOS is made by humans and it's not 100% foolproof, nothing is, you can, the option, you can you always have the option to do a rollback. I mean, if this switch happens not to your liking, you can just do this single command and your NixOS will roll back to your previous configuration. Well, what if the switch breaks the system? As I said before, NixOS configuration, we call them generations, are stored in your bootloader. So even if after the switch your system becomes unresponsive for whatever reason, you can always reboot it and pick whichever generation you like. Usually the second to last because that's the one that probably worked. But if you do a lot of upgrades, it might be a different generation. What happens to these generations if you don't need them? Well, there is something called garbage collection, which you can trigger manually, and it works pretty much like your standard programming garbage collector. You've got profiles, you've got things that configuration links to and things that no, no configuration links to, uh, and those are removed by the garbage collector. So, these are, I think, the most interesting things about NixOS itself, but let's talk about the Nix package manager as well. Uh, I already told you something about the, uh, I already spoke about it, uh, the independency. 
as I said, uh, Nix, uh, Nix allows you to manage your own profile, uh, your own packages, your own pretty much everything independently of the system admin, as long as you stay in your user space, of course. Uh, users are also independent from one another. That's, that's quite uh, well, implied, basically. But you are also independent on your distribution or even operating system. NixOS runs almost everywhere. I've been talking about profiles and environments. Uh, these terms, I, I would prefer not to define them. These uh, are the terms I'm using mostly for you. These are not, well, sort of official, but I'm not aware that are, these are being used as official as I'd like. But uh, what, whatever I remember, I was talking about a profile here. I was talking about the configuration of your user profile mostly, the same way as you configure the system. Like you have, you have a Nix, let's say it's called Nix expression, some sort of, you build it, you've got your configuration, you've got your uh, packages and everything defined in there. And that's static. And when you change the configuration, a new configuration is created in the profile, which creates a new generation of that profile or configuration. And you can go between them as much as you can uh, with the OS itself. But there's also this concept of environments, and those environments are dynamic. Ephemeral, you can make them on demand, like I did with the, uh, with the Inkscape example. You can do much more complex configurations than that. You can create a uh, using uh, this uh, Nix shell capability, you can create your own uh, environment for, let's say, package development. You can have multiple libraries with multiple versions of these different libraries having in different environments in parallel. So you can test your configuration against different libraries at the same time without having to touch the system or do anything fancy with the, like VNs or something like that. You can just create the environment on demand and you can destroy it after you're done. So that's, that's I think, one of the great things for pro users, but it can be useful for uh, beginners as well. And of course, Nix runs everywhere. Like literally everywhere where Linux kernel is, there can be Nix running on it. So you can run your Nix, you can run Nix on your Red Hat systems, you can run it on Ubuntu, so you can run it even on Macs. That's actually wildly supported by the community. Mac is uh, the second largest, maybe even the, f no, I'm not sure, but it's one of the two largest platforms Nix builds for. So even if you use macOS, you can use Nix on macOS without, <coughs> without any hassle. And of course, it even runs on Android. I, I personally don't use that, but I've seen it working, and I've seen there is a good support for that. Uh, there are ports for other platforms. I think I've seen a discussion about FreeBSD. Not sure what the state is, but uh, well, you may follow that if you're interested in that. Good, right? Well, sometimes Nixos doesn't really fit your need. And the most, uh, uh, the biggest example, for instance, with, uh, with beginner users and normal users like us is unfortunately games. Specifically, and that is the, the sad part, Linux native games. Like Unity 3D games, uh, I was unable to start two out of three Unity games on NixOS, no matter how hard I tried. Because, um, and that, that goes for native closed source applications as well. If you have any closed source application that you need to run, you might find it difficult to run on NixOS. It's not impossible, but it's definitely not gonna be easy. Uh, because something called the Nix store. This is how Nix uh, creates everything. It creates uh, packages, files, configuration, everything NixOS outputs ultimately lands in this directory, which uh, is read only for users, so you shouldn't touch it otherwise. And it contains, as you can see, it contains all kinds of random things. This thing, this is a cryptographic hash of the specific build of the thing that makes it unique, and that's what allows you to have multiple versions of the same, of the same library, because the prefix will always be different. But this prefix will always be the same if you put the same inputs to the same configuration. That's the immutability part. But since everything is easier, it means that nothing is in the common directories like userlib or uh, even bin or sbin or user sbin. These directories are usually mostly empty uh, because the, <coughs> the execution environments for these packages are built per package. And that makes things that rely on those, that assume these sort of standard but not really standard locations to be present and you have to fix those, uh, and it's not easy. I don't want to go into technical details, but be prepared, and if you, if you have any cold source thing, you might run into these issues. So, 
I hope you have questions. We can answer here because uh, I only went through like three or four things that might be interesting and I'm sure there are much more use cases out there because each user is unique and have unique needs, so go ahead. Well, if you want to, if you want to build a closed, to, oh, sorry, yeah, uh, the question was, uh, if you want, well, what do I do if I want to build a closed source application? Well, if you want to build it for NixOS, then you can build it just like any other application. The distribution in NixStore is binary, so that's not a problem. But uh, if you want to distribute it and to be, uh, for it to be compatible with NixOS, then my suggestion probably would be build it statically. Let it, let, let it ship all view dependencies it has, like all view dependencies, like Go applications, essentially. We can also talk about server use cases. I mean, I, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, can you speak a bit louder? No, no, that's the, the NixOS switch does. It switches your current runtime environment to the new generation, but you might have to reboot it if you rely on things that only happen at boot, like kernel upgrades. That's the same with, with any other. Sorry? I repeat the question. Okay, sorry, uh, the question was, do I always have to reboot when I do uh, the configuration change? No, you don't, unless the change requires reboot by design. Yeah, what, uh, the question is, what is the source of the packages? Well, this is, this is interesting. Uh, source of the packages, uh, by default, is something that is called Next Channel, which contains uh, information about all the packages uh, in source. And there is a building, uh, build, build system that, you can, uh, that caches the builds, basically, and it stores them under these hashes. So there is, there is an online caching system which has all these packages built with these hashes for the, ch for the official channels. So you can always download, you can either build them yourself or you can just try the cache if the package already exists in there and is downloaded from there automatically if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it gets built. How do I know that, say, this OMS has, has built from the upstream with no other additional changes? How do I know that? Uh, how do I know that uh, this package is built the same way? Well, you can build it yourself and you will see that this hash will be the same if the inputs are the same. That's the immutability part. If the inputs are the same, inputs being both uh, the configuration and the sources, uh, like a git commit for a specific commit from the sources, then if you build it from there, then you will end up with the same hash. If you don't, then there's a problem somewhere you need to solve and it's probably uh, <coughs> different source or maybe it is a security issue, maybe, try, maybe someone tried to touch your sources. So if you don't trust the caches, you can build everything yourself. And the last question is, do I trust the sources then? Uh, is there something that you would think that you can trust or is there something that you would recommend to always build out the web? I think, I think uh, it, are the sources trustworthy, essentially? Yes, I think they are. I mean, NixOS is a huge distribution. Everything is cryptographically signed by the package uh, developers. You can always go through the public history of the packages on the Nixos, uh, Nix packages uh, GitHub repo. And I don't want to lie here, but if I recall correctly, you should be able to know this hash <coughs> before you even build it. This hash is calculated from the sources, not from the outcome. So uh, yeah, you should be able to check. No more questions? No server admins interested in NixOS? Okay, there was one. How much space do you recommend for NixOS? Well, how much space does it take? Most of the space, like the bulk of everything is in Nix store. Almost everything is like, uh, if, you, if you have uh, 50 gigs, then 49.5 gigs will be in Nix store. Uh, it really depends on how many generations of uh, history you want to keep. If you only work with the latest generation, that, then uh, the space is pretty much the same as with any other distro. 
Like if you have many packages, let's say 10, 20 gigs, if you, if you want to keep generations, multiply by the number of generations, essentially. Uh, there was a question over there, I think. OK, go ahead. Wow. Uh, can you have mix store backed by external storage? Yes, you can. As long as it provides basic POSIX compatibility, then yes. And I don't think even POSIX compatibility is required. I'm not sure on that. But yeah, you, you can be able it, it actually even happens when you have, let's say, virtual machines on a, on a vHost, and the vHost can share its own mix store and share it to the machines, and they can share the packages because, again, the packages are addressable. Probably, yes. If you mount an ISO image, yes. The question was, can I use an ISO image? Yes, you can. Uh, someone, OK? Is it possible to install textures from other distributors somehow? Because I imagine many soft, a lot, lot of software will not be available specifically for mix because it's an image OS. Huh. That's, <coughs> that's a nice question. Is other packages from other distributions available? Well, let me answer slightly differently. Nix packages is the largest collection of packages of open source applications out there. It has, yesterday, it has over 80,000 packages available. The second largest was uh, Arch Linux AUR, and it has, I think, about 60,000. So, well, there are good chances that your package is already packaged for Nix OS. But if it isn't, if you really need to use uh, some other distributions package, then you can use, uh, well, Flatpak is supported. Uh, so you can use Flatpaks. And uh, you can always just uh, um, write a simple uh, wrapper around the other distributions package. You can un uh, unpackage it and just put it to Nix store as a package. But you may have to patch the binaries so they look for the correct libraries of dependencies because userlib doesn't exist. So you may have to do a binary patch. But Nix has f uh, facilities for that. You can use Nix for anything. It's essentially a build system. Yes, you can. Uh, the question was, can I use Nix to package other packages for other distributions? You can use Nix to package anything. Uh, I'm not sure if there are default outputs for different packages, but there are definitely outputs for Docker containers, for instance. You can build a Docker container from a Nix expression for from Nix expression. Go ahead. I'm not sure I heard the question completely. Uh, I heard that uh, the question is uh, how the Nix language is in terms of stability? It's quite good. I mean, I use Helix Editor and Vim mostly, and, and the support is there. I'm not sure about VS Code, but uh, even this presentation software has support for Nix language, and it's like two years updated. So. I mean the highlighter, not, not, not the parser, but the highlighter is, you, you see the language was highlighted and that was the internal works of this uh, presenting software, which is outdated. So the support is pretty good, I, I, I would say. No server questions, really. Go ahead. If I have a package that needs to change the state of the system, well, uh, you probably shouldn't use a package for that. You should use something called a module, which is uh, a NixOS thing that defines the configuration. It happens all the time in dev universe, right? That you have packages that change the configuration of the system, and they change the configuration between uh, application error or you know, something else, and then configuration between Right. Uh, do I, if I have, if I have to choose uh, System package like for web server, do I choose between uh, Nix OS and Arch Linux, uh, sorry, and uh, Apache, and how the package tells the system that it is now the default web server? You don't do this in Nix OS. You just say, I want, you, you basically, I can actually show you, maybe, 
I can show you how the live presentation is presented on my, there you go. No, sorry. This is, come on. Come on, it's lagging a bit. This is how you do that. You declare a service, okay, I want a service that is called Nginx, I want this service to have a virtual host with this name, and I want to do something like this with it. This is how you define a virtual host in Nginx, and this is everything, this is all you need to put into configuration for uh, a full Nginx uh, web server with uh, redirect in this case to work. So you don't, you don't, you don't do uh, state changes by the packages, you do them by this, uh, this, is, this is called a module. This is called the module services with module nginx, which has uh, some sub-modules configuration, et cetera, et cetera. There's a huge, huge numbers of these modules. Uh, everything, almost everything that you commonly use is uh, probably a module for NixOS. This is a NixOS feature, not a Nix feature, by the way. You've got something similar for your home environment using Home Manager. So that's how you do that. You don't change the state of the system by a package. That you, you shouldn't do that to a stateless system, because NixOS is essentially stateless. One more question, go ahead. If I understand correctly, you can easily replace the configuration of an HTTP with like Ansible with and so on. Yes, exactly. The question is, can I replace uh, automation tools with NixOS? Yes, NixOS is by definition its own configuration tool. So yeah, it, it's, it, since it's, uh, it's purely functional and fully declarative, it's, uh, you say Ansible, Puppet maybe, those are not uh, purely declarative languages, but uh, for instance, Terraform is. So if you want to compare, uh, I think one of the best comparisons would be Terraform. What Terraform is for, let's say, cloud infrastructure, Nix language is for Nix OS. So Nix does a lot of that, but there is a language. Okay. Can you start over, please, and a bit, bit more? Right, the question is about the state of the project uh, of NixOS, how mature it is, what parts are mature, what parts are not. I don't feel I'm the one to be answer these questions, but uh, if I would have to answer them, then I would say NixOS and it, at its base, uh, the Nix language, the module system, it's quite mature, it's been with us for, um, I would say over a decade now, not sure, but I would say that is, yeah, thanks. It's probably well over a decade now, what, what is new and a bit unstable is uh, features called Flakes, which I still want to talk about a little bit uh, in, a, in a minute. And that's, that's a, a different approach to Nix package, packages called Flakes. It's still experimental, but it's been widespread and it's, I think, pretty stable, but officially still experimental. But NixOS at its base, I really wouldn't have a problem using it in production on servers in mass scale. Right, let's wrap it up. Uh, okay, one last question, but make it quick. Uh, can I run NixOS on a mainframe? I don't know. <laughs> on, on Raspberry Pi, yes, you can. I, I, I'm running a Raspberry Pi home server on NixOS. All right, so uh, let me give you a few tips at the end. Uh, learn flakes. Already, this, this topic has already been uh, touched. Uh, Flakes is a new system for uh, package management in uh, NixOS and Nix. If you want to start with NixOS, learn Flakes. I didn't, I don't know much about them, uh, and it's biting me in the ass, so <laughs> do learn Flakes. Uh, the, the official installer, I mean, there is a new installer, it's just a few weeks old, I think, which is uh, the same installer as for Ubuntu and other systems, but there are a bunch of other installers, so if you are not comfortable with installation, uh, look out for the other installers, they might be easier.
use Home Manager for your home configuration is the same uh, declarative config as it is for the operating system. Don't be afraid to make changes, you don't break it, and once you're comfortable enough, try to install XLS fully manually just to see how it works under the hood. Uh, there is a couple of resources. This presentation will be available later, so you can check them out. And uh, thank you very much.